Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I'm going to show you guys how that you can make a jig to do electrical safeties with a regular multimeter. You can do a real electrical safety with a regular multimeter, and this might not benefit too many people in the United States because many of us have electrical safety meters. But with this little jig that I'm going to teach you how to make, you can do electrical safeties in the field reliably with a calibrated multimeter. Most electrical safety measurements can be taken with a multimeter anyway, but the only difference in this case is you have to be able to keep it powered on while lifting ground. And that is actually kind of difficult. So that's why we're going to make a jig. That's what we're going to do today. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Alright guys, we are going to be building an electrical safety jig so that you can do tests with your own multimeter and it's usually going to revolve around a little power cord like this guy here. We are going to use a female receptacle or a female plug-in. I'm going to use a little gator clip. See this gator clip right here with a reasonably heavy duty, although it doesn't need to be reasonably heavy duty uh, conductor. And I'm gonna steal a little piece of uh, ground conductor out of this cable right here. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we need a small piece of ground conductor and we're gonna pull it from this garbage cord right here. And I'm just looking for a couple inches. That's it, nothing big, nothing special. And because it's going to be a ground conductor that is going to be in a test apparatus, definitely we should do uh, the correct color ground conductor. So it's going to have to be the green one. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting it back far enough that I can grab onto it and just pull it out. There's my ground conductor. We are ready to go. Okay, so there's our ground conductor. The rest of this, we are not gonna use. We can just go ahead and get rid of it. Next, I've got my small power cord. This one here is only about a foot and a half long. Doesn't need to be anything special. All I need is the male plug end and a rather durable conductor, okay? This one here, I'm going to do with the 15 amp plug because it's going to be more compatible with more devices. And the female side is also a 15 amp. So no testing 20 amp devices this way, <laughs> not unless you want to upgrade your cord. So I'm going to cut the end off right here. I want this guy to be as long as possible, really. There we go. Let's go ahead and set this aside. We can get rid of this guy right here no longer needed. Now I've got my cord. I don't know, it's about a foot long, maybe a foot and a half. And I need to strip this guy back a little bit, okay? We've got a small set of pliers here. Help me break it apart. Okay, I've got my three conductors. On this European style wire code, we've got blue, brown, and green. Blue is neutral, brown is gonna be hot, green is obviously ground. The green one is the one that we are going to do something special with. The buttons that I'm using are push-on, push-off style buttons. See, so push it on, push off, push on, push off. Um, the other way that you could do it is with a momentary button, the ones that you push on and then you release and it's in the off position. But uh, I figured this one here, latching it on, latching it off, was going to be way more uh, useful in the field than one that you have to hold the button. So let's see, let's go ahead and strip these guys back. All right guys, in order to make this jig, I've got my button, I've got my gator clip, the wire is tinned, although here I can probably do a better job of that. There we go. Wire's tinned with extra solder on it. I've got my little uh, ground conductor, one end is tinned with a little extra solder on it. The ground conductor on my um, shortened power cord it is tinned on the ground 
with a little extra on it. And what I need to do is I need the gator clip to be soldered or attached with a crimp to the ground plug conductor. Okay, so I need these two here to be touching together, right? So me, I'm gonna solder them together. Should be quick and easy. Just like this. All right, here we go. Both of them are together. Now what we need to do, I've got vice grips here that are gonna help me hold this button. Like that. Okay. And what I need to do is I need to cut a piece of shrink tube to go down over this so it covers eh, a good share of the length. So let's go ahead and cut this guy down to size. Got this one here. I'm gonna cut it down to about that long. It's gonna go over these two wires. And what I need to do is I need to solder these two wires to one pin of the push button. So I'm gonna do that now. All right. So now I've got my two wires going down to the push button and I now have my single wire which is going to run up to my plug and I need to get this guy also some shrink tube. Let's go with this guy. Sure, why not? Why not? Let's do the whole length. Okay, and this guy gets soldered to the other leg of the push button. Okay, at this point I'm going to release the button, shove both the shrink tubes all the way up, as far as they both will go, all the way up, and I'm going to go ahead and heat them up, shrink them down. That should be good to go for right now. All right, so I, I got my button done. Push on, push off. It's all set. Now what I need to do is get three conductors that are gonna go up towards, oh, ooh, wow, that is hot, 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 hot. So my three conductors are gonna go up towards the plug and I'm gonna have to put those through the back of the bell but first, I want to put a larger shrink tube around all of these to keep them next to each other, okay? All right, that's looking way better. Okay, so I got all three of my conductors here. I got my button there. I've got a little gator clip coming out the back end. And now it is ready to get shrunk down. So let's do that now. It's a much larger piece of shrink tube. I think I'm going to have to take it up to 300 degrees C just to make this go a little faster. out of there. I don't, I don't want to melt that guy. We're cooking at 300 degrees C to shrink this guy down because it's a rather large shrink tube. All right, all right, all right. So now, <clears throat> now, wow, 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 that is very toasty. So now I've got to get all three wires up through the back of the bell 
just like you would with a regular cord when you're doing a plug end. And we're gonna do that. I think I'm gonna have to pull the grommet out. Shove the grommet up first. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. That is so toasty. There we go. Much, much easier. All right, and this, since it's gonna be used for safeties, it's absolutely paramount that you get the uh, conductors in the right spot. So remember, uh, hot goes to brass, neutral goes to the silver, and ground goes to the green. So hot, remember I said hot is gonna be the brown, blue is gonna be the neutral, and then green is gonna be your ground. All right, let's go ahead and loosen these up. Loosen them up all the way. You can see how I'm opening up the gates on all three of these. All right, here we go. So we got hot, neutral, ground, right? Which is exactly how it's already set up. So we put them into their correct spots. Tighten them down. And the ground was a little bit longer than the other two. So you can see I'm kind of bending the plug a little bit to attach the ground so it's longer than the other two. All right. Here we go. And the back shield goes on. Like this. All right, and then two flat blades on the front. Okay, I'm gonna slide the grommet down over where it needs to go. Tuck it in with this guy. This is actually a really nice plug-in to be doing this on. There we go. Okay, so here is the completed plug. It's got the gator, it's got the on off button, which activates and deactivates your ground. And this is gonna be what you're gonna use to test the equipment. So let's go ahead and see how that works in real time. All right guys, I told you that we can do an electrical safety with a multimeter and I'm gonna show you how you can do it with this little jig right here. So, you can see it's got the female end, it's got the male end, it's got a little weird gator clip that is soldered to the ground of the plug-in, and then you've got a switch which turns on and off the ground to the plug. So the first test in all electrical safeties is you're gonna check the impedance of the ground from the chassis of the equipment to the end of the plug. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on. This is my Klein Tools MM700. So we are already on ground. There we go. So I'm not on continuity mode, I'm on ohms mode, okay? So let's make sure you're in ohms. The first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to put it on the ground pin, which is the round one here in the United States, and then you're going to touch the chassis of the equipment. And you can see I'm showing 0, 0.0 ohms and a typical multimeter if you have a really good ground which I know that I do because it's a brand new cord you're gonna get zero or next to zero now remember 0.5 of an ohm is the max that it can go so this guy is good to go it's, it's less than 0.1 of an ohm all right so the next thing you need to do is you need to take your equipment power cord and you need to plug it into your jig all right it's gonna plug in just like that. This little gator clip that's on here, you're gonna go ahead and connect that one to one of your multimeter leads, probably your black, right? And you can go ahead and just set this guy 
over by the receptacle because you're going to have to plug it in. Next thing you got to do is you have to configure your multimeter for milliamps or microamps. So that means you're going to have to take your positive lead and you're going to have to move it over to the other terminal. All right? And then you got to turn it to milliamps or microamps. I'm going to start at milliamps because if it does have a lot of leakage, I can catch it quite quickly. And if it shows zero or, you know, none detected, then I'll switch it down to microamps. Here we go. We take the jig and we plug it into the wall. That is going to give us power to the equipment. Now remember, all tests for equipment are done with the power off and then later with the power on. And in both conditions, you have to lift ground, which is the low push button. Okay. So here is the plug. You can see it's on milliamps. This is with uh, ground connected. You see the power's off, the ground is connected. I got nothing. I'm gonna go ahead and push the button and lift ground. I have nothing. I'm gonna reattach the ground. Now I'm gonna turn the device on. Which, mind you guys, this, this is a defibrillator, so it's gonna have next to no leakage whatsoever. It's designed that way because this is the most stringent electrical safety standard there is because this one here is used in cardiac cases. So these guys are gonna have next to no leakage whatsoever anyway, all right? So my ground is on, it's connected, and I'm gonna go ahead and touch my ground lug again. And I'm gonna, you can see it's got 0, 0.00 microamps, or milliamps. I'm gonna lift ground and you can see I've got nothing, okay? So now I know that I don't have a huge amount of leakage. I can now turn it down to microamps. Connect it back up. Now it's grounded. I'm gonna lift ground. You can see that I've got nothing. So this guy has next to no leakage whatsoever. And trust me, you will definitely see it. I'm on microamps of AC you are technically measuring between the ground of your receptacle and the chassis. That is how you can normally test a device if you walk up and you think you got leakage. You connect one lead of your, your multimeter to the ground receptacle and then the other lead to your chassis. And that will tell you how much leakage your device has. But in order to do a proper electrical safety, you have to be able to lift ground which is why we built the jig in the first place. So that's grounded, that's lifted ground. Anyway guys, that's a, just a quick how-to on uh, making a jig. I hope you guys find this a little informative. You can actually use this to do electrical safeties with a multimeter, especially if you don't have a lot of money to be buying an electrical safety analyzer or if one's clearly not available on the market in your location in the world. You can do electrical safeties with a multimeter by building a simple jig like this. Okay? That's it, guys. Simple as it gets. Electrical safety jig with a multimeter. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.